I'm going to enjoy a trip with my sister using your credit card. These words echoed in my ears, and I couldn't help but think about the past few weeks. Scott, my husband, had been acting strangely for some time, sneaking around, having late-night conversations with his sister, Hillary. It was obvious they were up to something. I had my suspicions, and I was right. But I had a plan of my own, one they weren't ready for. What do you mean by using my card? I asked, feigning surprise. Oh, Megan, don't act clueless, Scott said, a smirk audible in his voice. I've been planning this trip with Hillary for a long time, and we decided to bring Ethan along too. You're always so full of yourself, and it's time you learn your place. He laughed, obviously thinking he had the upper hand. Little did he know I had already replaced my bank card with an old fitness club membership card. I had anticipated this. For too long, I'd tolerated his arrogance, his sister's shameless demands for money, and the way they treated me like an outsider in my own home. I decided it was time to take my life back. Oh, Scott, I think you've made a mistake, I said calmly. You're probably holding the wrong card. There was silence on the line, then a confused sputtering. What do you mean? This is your credit card. Wait, it says fitness club member. Scott's voice dropped and I could almost picture the color draining from his face. Oh, you didn't realize? I guess you went all the way to New York without even checking. It's my old membership card. How thoughtful of you to bring it along, I replied, my voice laced with sarcasm. Good luck on your trip, Scott. And with that, I hung up. The truth was, I had been planning my retaliation for weeks. It was clear Scott and Hillary were up to something far worse than just taking a trip. The late night whispers, the constant plotting, I knew they were looking to strip me of everything I had worked so hard for. But I wasn't going to let that happen. I called Ethan, Hillary's husband, to fill him in. He had been just as fed up with Hillary's behavior as I was with Scott's. Together, we gathered the evidence we needed, promissory notes, bank statements, even audio recordings of their threats and scheming. The final nail in the coffin was Ethan's discovery of travel brochures hidden in Hillary's drawer. Let's do this together, Ethan said, his voice determined. They've taken advantage of us for too long. The day after Scott left for the trip, I packed my things and moved out. I filed for divorce, using the mountains of evidence we'd collected. Ethan did the same. By the time Scott and Hillary returned, thinking they could bully me into submission, I was ready for them. When they stormed into the house, they found Ethan and me waiting, accompanied by our lawyer. Their smug expressions quickly vanished when they saw the stack of legal documents waiting for them. Wait, what is this? Scott stammered, his eyes darting from the lawyer to the papers. Divorce? Compensation? Yes, Scott, I said, my voice steady. You've underestimated me for the last time. You and your sister thought you could take everything from me but it turns out you're the ones who will be losing everything. Hillary tried to argue, but Ethan stepped in. Enough, Hillary. You've taken advantage of everyone around you, and now it's time to face the consequences. Scott, still in shock, tried to grab the documents from the lawyer, but they were only copies. The originals were safely stored away, ready for court if necessary. There was nothing they could do. They were trapped by their own actions. After they left, Defeated and humiliated, I finally felt a sense of peace wash over me. It was over. The years of manipulation, deceit, and disrespect had come to an end. I was free. Ethan and I shared a quiet dinner that night, reflecting on everything that had happened. He smiled at me, a gentle warmth in his eyes. Here's to new beginnings, he said, raising his glass. To new beginnings, I echoed, feeling lighter than I had in years. And as for Scott and Hillary, they were left to deal with the fallout of their own greed and arrogance. I moved into a new apartment, focused on my career, and soon after, I was promoted to head of the department, a goal I had worked tirelessly to achieve. Life was finally looking up, and I was ready to embrace whatever came next. What happened between Ethan and me after that is a story for another day. But for now, I can tell you this. Freedom, respect, and happiness are worth fighting for, and I finally had all three. 
The first few weeks after moving out were a whirlwind of emotions and adjustments. The weight of everything I had endured over the years seemed to slowly lift off my shoulders, but there were moments when the gravity of what had happened pulled me down. I focused on settling into my new apartment, making it my own, and finding joy in the little things, decorating, rearranging, and filling it with only what I needed. This was my space, and it represented the start of something better. One of the biggest challenges was navigating my new routine without the constant dread of Scott and Hillary. It felt strange at first, not needing to constantly watch my back or prepare myself for whatever scheme they were cooking up next. I filled my days with work, pouring myself into my job, and it paid off. My promotion to head of the department came sooner than I expected. My hard work had finally been recognized, and the validation felt incredible. But Scott and Hillary weren't ready to let go so easily. The messages started pouring in, first from Scott, then from Hillary. Scott's messages ranged from desperate apologies to thinly veiled threats. He accused me of ruining his life, of betraying him. He begged for a second chance, promising he had changed. But I knew better. He hadn't changed, and he never would. Hillary, on the other hand, was full of spite. Her messages were filled with insults and attempts to guilt trip me into helping them. They were struggling, and she wanted me to fix it. I blocked their numbers, but that didn't stop them. They started using different numbers, creating new accounts to reach me online. It was exhausting, but I refused to let them drag me down again. I documented everything, every message, every call, and passed it along to my lawyer. If they wanted a fight, I was ready. Ethan was going through a similar ordeal with Hillary. We stayed in touch, offering each other support when things got tough. We met up often, sometimes to talk about our next steps, other times just to unwind. It was during one of these meetups, over a quiet dinner at a small restaurant, that Ethan suggested something that caught me off guard. You know, Megan, he said, looking at me thoughtfully, we've both been through a lot. And honestly, I don't know if I would have had the strength to go through with all of this if it weren't for you. I smiled, a little surprised. I feel the same way, Ethan. I couldn't have done this alone. He paused, then continued. I know it might be too soon to even think about this, but maybe when everything settles down, we could see where this goes. He gestured between us, his expression hopeful but uncertain. I felt a warmth spread through me at his words. Ethan had been my rock through all of this, and I had grown to care for him deeply. But the wounds from Scott and Hillary were still fresh, and I needed time to heal. I'd like that, I said softly, but let's take things slow. We both need time to move on from everything that happened. Ethan nodded, a gentle smile on his face. Of course, there's no rush. Weeks passed, and Scott's harassment began to fade. My lawyer had sent a cease and desist letter, and it seemed to finally get through to him. Hillary, too, had gone quiet, likely too occupied with her own problems to continue bothering me. It was a relief, and I started to feel like I could truly move forward without the shadow of their toxicity looming over me. One afternoon, as I was leaving work, I received an unexpected call from Ethan. His voice was filled with excitement. Megan, you won't believe this. Hillary finally agreed to settle. She's signing the divorce papers. I felt a surge of happiness for him. Ethan, that's amazing. I'm so happy for you. It's all thanks to you, he said. You helped me see that I deserved better, that I didn't have to put up with her manipulation anymore. You deserved better all along, Ethan, I replied. I'm just glad you're finally getting the peace you need. We decided to meet up that evening to celebrate. We went to a small, cozy restaurant we had discovered together, a place that had become our go-to spot when we needed to unwind. Over dinner, we talked about everything and nothing, letting the weight of the past few months fall away. There was no talk of Scott or Hillary, no discussions of legal battles or plans for revenge, just two people enjoying each other's company, finally free from the chains that had held them back for so long. As the evening went on, I found myself looking at Ethan in a new light. He had been my partner through some of the darkest times of my life. And now, 
As I watched him laugh at something the waiter said, I realized that I wanted him to be part of the brighter times too. Maybe it was too soon. Maybe it wasn't. But in that moment, I knew I wanted to find out. Ethan, I said, my voice barely above a whisper. He turned to me, his eyes warm and attentive. About what you said before. About us. I think. I think I'm ready to see where this goes. His smile lit up his entire face, and he reached across the table to take my hand. I'm glad to hear that, Megan. We'll take it one step at a time, together. And that's exactly what we did. We took things slow, giving ourselves the time and space we needed to heal and grow. We supported each other, celebrated each other's successes, and found comfort in each other's presence. It wasn't always easy. There were moments when the scars from our past threatened to reopen, but we faced them together, and that made all the difference. One year after Scott and Hillary's failed trip, I stood in front of a room full of my colleagues, accepting an award for my contributions to the company. It was a moment I had dreamed of for years, and as I looked out at the faces of my coworkers, I spotted Ethan in the back, clapping proudly. He gave me a thumbs up, and I couldn't help but smile. This was my life now, filled with people who supported me, who respected me, who loved me for who I was. After the ceremony, Ethan and I went out to celebrate. We walked along the river, the city lights reflecting off the water, and I felt a sense of contentment I hadn't known in years. I had fought for my freedom, for my happiness, and I had won. And now, I was finally ready to let go of the past and embrace the future. Thank you for being here, Ethan, I said, leaning into him as we walked. I don't know what I would have done without you. He wrapped his arm around my shoulders, pulling me close. You don't have to thank me, Megan. We're a team, remember? I looked up at him, my heart swelling with gratitude and love. Yeah, we are. And as we walked together, I knew that whatever challenges lay ahead, I wouldn't face them alone. I had found my strength, my freedom, and my happiness, and for the first time in a long time, I was truly, completely at peace. What happened next between Ethan and me? Well, that's a story for another day. But for now, I can tell you this. Love, trust, and true partnership are worth fighting for, and I finally had all three.